The ripple effects from the housing crisis go far and wide. And right now, lawmakers are debating how much funding this problem should get. But will that help be too late for people worried about losing their homes, let's say, a month from now? Ryan Laughlin gives us the inside look at how out-of-state investors are now playing a role in this current housing situation. It's all part of this for Investigates. If they keep raising the rent, I'm going to be homeless. It's not right. It is not right. It's getting harder to afford a home. This is heading for collapse because you can't sustain this kind of greed. People are desperate for solutions. It is disturbing, for sure. A once affordable place to live is making money for out-of-state investors but leaving New Mexicans priced out. We need help. There's some of my Cowboys things. Rochelle Smith knows the game. One of the things you get to do is get your picture taken on the star. But in her mobile home park, the rules are changing. I'm officially an old person. I live in a 55 plus mobile home community. I play bingo at two different senior centers and I have a golf cart. She says evidence of the new owner at Albuquerque Meadows is just around the corner. There's weeds everywhere. There's a stove and a refrigerator out on the deck. Those are also no-nos. Now that Legacy has taken over, they're doing um, a bare minimum. Legacy Communities purchased the park in 2021. Smith says the community pool turned green, the clubhouse flooded, and the problems piled up with the bills. We were just taken aback because it was so much higher than it had ever been before. I'm looking for somebody with legacy communities that we can talk to about the, the new ownership group and some of the decisions they've made. Legacy communities wouldn't give us an interview, but the company president said in a statement, the pool and clubhouse will be fixed and keeping people in their homes is good business. In mobile home parks, the homes are owned by the residents. The land is rented by the mobile home park owners. Since 2021, Smith's lot rental rate is up nearly 25%. Some people are taking their half of their medications so that they can make that medicine last longer and not have to pay the copay. Many neighbors here live on a fixed income. And you feel you're being extorted. Oh God, extorted, exploited, used up, spit out. The game's the same across town. Makes me bad, makes me really mad at the Carlisle Plaza mobile home park. All of us were in shock. Afraid of retaliation from new owners' core communities? This Carlisle Plaza resident showed us lot rental rates went up by 30% in one year. And the similarities don't end there. So then they hustled you to sign this new lease, mm -hmm. which was a 30-day lease. It's a month to month. Which gives them the latitude to change things. Oh, yeah every month. Yeah. Both companies use month to month leases. And but it's all done on our corporate side. Corporate side? So Where are they located? They are in Seaview, Florida. Florida? Yeah. We're looking for the owners. I understand they're in Florida. 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 Do you have a good contact information? The mobile home park game is like Monopoly. If rent goes up by so much and the residents can't afford to stay, and if the homes are too old or too costly to move, corporate owners have the first chance to buy those homes, to turn around and rent or resell them. So if the smaller players sell out to the bigger players... Does that make it wrong? I don't necessarily see it as wrong or right. I see it as creating potential social problems that we all need to be aware of. University of New Mexico property law professor Elizabeth Alia. New Mexico has uh, either the highest or the second highest rate per capita of people living in mobile and manufactured homes. And coast to coast. About 20 to 25 percent of mobile home parks across the nation are, are owned by uh, real estate investment companies that are not local. Investors are learning how to play the mobile home park ownership game. It's called the ideal system, I-D-E-A-L system of park evaluation. The film A Decent Home looks at Mobile Home University, which teaches people how to buy and then turn mobile home parks into cash flow machines. We are in times that, that require us to ask the question, how much is enough? 
Sarah Terry is using her documentary as a tool to argue for a rule change. Residents need to get organized. I've got stories that'll pull your hair. Stories about her neighbors. This is the last place before heaven. And for a lot of these people, that is exactly what it has been. The mobile home next to Smith is empty. The man that lived there just died. Smith says his rent went up three times in the past three years. To have them spend their last few years fighting to keep a roof over their heads at 80, 70, 80, 90 years old, it's not right. Legacy Communities sent us a statement. And while the people living at the park say it's not improving, they pointed to some improvements that we saw, like the new pickleball courts and an improved clubhouse. They say that's going to be finished very soon. You can read their full statement up at KOB.com right now. As for core communities that owns Carlisle Plaza, they never got back to us. Ryan Laughlin for Investigates.